this I think this event itself kind of really puts in perspective. When I was younger, um, college age, I wanted to do photography, and I was obsessed with photography, and I loved it. But then I thought about it, and sometimes when you're young, you don't may always make the best decisions. And I was like, you know what? I don't want my art to actually be my job. I don't want to like lose that interest in it, and so I went into sales. <laughs> and I've been like just been in sales for whatever twenty plus years. And after I was like, you know, I don't want to knock on another door anymore. Like, I, I'm sick of, it. but but I love Santa Cruz. I love all that we do. I love the entrepreneur spirit of people that can like get a business card and a lawnmower and start a business. So, but I didn't like all the boring network stuff that happens. I don't want you know we just. Hey, here's a, my business card. Call me, call me. I wanted to put on a show. I wanted to make it fun. And so that's how Event Santa Cruz started. We started off in a, a movie theater and had a, a great movie by you. And got, we had these interesting people talk about what drives and motivates them. Because business is kind of boring. But it's the people behind the businesses that's interesting. So um, I, I basically, I feel like that's kind of my art in a way. It's like I get to put on a show for somebody. And so that's what the last few months I've been really focusing on that. What are passionate things that people really get excited about? Like food, art, music. How can I incorporate that into our events? And so um, I wanted, and I thought art was definitely my next step. And it was actually, it was very tough to find um, the, you know, or, or sift through because we actually had a lot of people that, fit the non-starving artists in Santa Cruz. Oh, and we, we have the whole oh. gamut. I'm so yeah. glad to hear that, yeah, Matthew. So, no, it, it, was, it was really tough. To, I, mean, like, I still get every day, I get people emailing me like, oh, I would love to be on the panel. I'd love to be speakers. And I would love to have them. I feel like I can do a whole year of these non-starving artists. Um, no, we're very fortunate to, to live where we live and have that artist representation. I also want to give a full disclosure. Another hat that you wear is tech raising, Mm -hmm. which is a yearly, pretty much, uh, annual event that has been happening at Cruise.io, where you take a weekend and you invite people that have ideas for a startup business. A lot of times that could be hardware, that could be apps, uh, software, um, all kinds of amazing business ideas. And you come in on Friday night, you pitch your idea, you may hopefully get a team of people that hear your pitch and say, I want to work on that. And... uh, I got to go to the last one, which yes. I was so happy for because I'd only been able to kind of like jump in and out in the the past. There's been three, there's right? Been four actually. Four. I so just the, got reminded of that. Right. So the first three, I only got to come in and see maybe the pitches or the the last day yeah. when people give or their the presentations, demo. yeah, the demos, you, yeah, um, that, where they demonstrate what they had worked on over the over the weekend. And I think there was about 150 people. Would you say? That's usually about yeah. And you are basically in it for the weekend. They can All live you do there. They, we feed them. We, we clothe them. We <laughs> give them you know, sleeping bags. <laughs> they yeah. can live in that spot. Right. But they code and you know, they make something amazing in, you know, in, in two days. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It is such a wonderful event, folks. Even if you're like, I don't have an idea, but I want to help. I want to I wanna market. I wanna, there's, there's room for Everybody for all skill sets. It's amazing. Fifty percent of the people are not even technically, you know, skillful. I'm not. I don't know how to code or something. Yeah, but, but if you're, you know, you just have an idea, or right. it's like, you know, you just want to feel the energy of it. It's it's such fun. We're actually we're planning end of April, starting of May. Mm-hmm. It's what's our next one? So okay, we'll try to make sure it's not on April 24th because that's the next TEDx Santa Cruz. It won't. Okay. Yeah. No. Right, we, we, we look at the calendar. We, yeah. We don't. It's always hard. That's there's so much <laughs> going on in town. Like I, I wish there was like. A, a bigger calendar had everything mm-hmm. involved. It's good mm-hmm. there one time, but we have so many different calendars. But no, we saw that, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's gonna be. It's gonna be later. Because I want to come to the next yeah. one. It is truly, folks. I can't. I can't wax fantastic enough about it. It. It <laughs> is you. such a fun. I mean, maybe it's just the geek in me that just enjoyed it so much. And working together, the the team formation. It's it's like building a business in. 72 hours. You know, and it's a very Santa Cruz-like thing because mm-hmm. other hackathons, it's all about okay, how much money can you win? Okay, how much can you, you know win over the other person and make like the biggest, best app that you know you feel will be successful? Um, it's all about collaboration. Yes. Like there's only one winner during the whole weekend. And what it, we have these coins, these tech-raising coins that everybody gets. And if they feel like someone helped, like say, okay, you helped me in my project, I can give you my coin. And whoever has the most coins at the end of the weekend, they win. They're the so, winner. Yeah, it's all about collaborating. So it's we're all trying wonderful. to help each other out. And we start something out of nothing. 
I mean, mm-hmm. we have websites, apps. They're really cool. And you notice that eighty percent of the things that are made are for the social good. Yeah, they're it's it's and it's not because we plan that out, but it just for Santa Cruz for some reason that's what our personality is and that's what happens. Oh. So yeah, so it's it's really it's a fun weekend. I love that. I wish love, I know. Love, love. Don't get much sleep, but it's fun to be there. Love, 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 and I love, love, love event Santa Cruz and Matthew Swinnerton is here to talk about our upcoming non-starving artists night, January 29th, beginning at six fifteen at Cosmic Design. It's uh, nearly sold out. So if you'd like to go, if this sounds like something that you'd want to hear about. EventSantaCruz.com is where you need to go. Let's just go quickly through the scheduled speakers. We got Frank Scott Kruger of Acorn. Tell us a little bit about that, Matthew. So he he's like the new cool guy in town. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a designer, and actually, quite, I got to talk to him a couple of um, a couple of weeks ago. He was living in Costa Rica, and um, just listening to his how that changed his design aspect of living someplace different. I thought it was really interesting. But he's a tech guy. He designs UI and stuff, you know, Tries. but he has this artistic eye that okay. I thought was so important. So he was actually, quite, he was in an accelerator in New York and he moved back to Santa Cruz and him and his team, you know, have a pretty cool app. That's Acorn. And then Chris McGilvray, who is of Six Finger Films and also the director of the Santa Cruz Film Festival. He's been on the show before, hasn't he? Mm, oh, yeah. Several yeah. times. He's a wonderful filmmaker. He and then is. we have Bridget Henry, who's a woodcut artist. Yes. And um, I didn't know much about her but I knew her work and it is beautiful there's actually some murals that she has I wish we somebody that wishes this was TV we can show them yeah but um, she's got if, her website if you just google Bridget Henry you can see some amazing work wood cutting work and she's made it like 20 times the size of a normal wood cutting art. All yeah, right. It's pretty cool. All right. Then we got Kevin Devaney, who is the uh, founder and probably the, the CEO of the Art Bar. Um, Kevin is the only poet I've ever met who makes money off of his poetry, and he took that from busking poetry to creating the Art Bar, where they're having weekly live mic, open mic poetry sessions, and has become a real hub over at the Tannery Art Center. It's done so well. Yeah. I, I love talking to Kevin, and I, um, I feel like his model should be replicated throughout the world. <laughs> um, then we have Martine Stippout. You got Stipout. it. Stippout. And Martine was on last week, so if you want to just see a little bit of his... Uh, he brought in a surfboard last week. He makes art surfboards, uh, pieces of art. These surfboards are can be displayed in your home <laughs> and then taken off the, the little rack and out in the water. They're amazingly beautiful. Then we have Linda, Linda Levy. Linda Levy is one of my heroes here in town. She is a digital diva powerhouse uh, community art builder. She has spent many years at the Santa Cruz Mountain Arts Center in Ben Loman, where she helped build the education both for children and adults and art, and she's an incredible artist herself. And, uh, uh, and then we have Akira. Who's she- Akira? So she's a young singer, songwriter. Cool. And um, that's been the hard part is music because every, every event I like to mix it up, not just speaking. But there's food. We're going to have good drinks. We're going to have music. And we always end off with something like music or sometimes we even have comedy at times. But mostly it's music. We have so many great musicians and it's hard to pick the right one. Yeah. So um, every one we have to see if they fit. And she is. She's just this um, beautiful singer, songwriter that um, I think her voice is going to amaze everybody. Oh, I so, bet it yeah. is. You have great taste, Matthew Swinnerton, for sure, for sure. Please go to eventsantacruz.com, folks. And now I want to talk a little bit with Doug Ross, who will be speaking as well. And Doug is an illustrator, fine artist. Uh, You do logos and branding and all kinds of stuff, right, Doug? Yeah, in fact, I've been doing it since before they started calling it branding. (laughs) Oh, when did that happen? I don't know. Was that in the 90s or in the 80s? It was definitely not the 80s. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, though, no, you're younger than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Doug Ross, you can go to his website at DougRoss.com. Doug, you make beautiful illustrations. You've been in New Yorker, is that correct? Not the New Yorker, the New York Times. The New York Times, <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that up. But you've also been in some other pretty big publications? Yeah, I have. I've been lucky in that I became pretty successful in the 90s and i have been published in the new york times about 40 times 
Business Week about a hundred times, Forbes magazine, uh, Boston Globe, some you know big national, high circulation publications. And you also do fine art. I ha- I do. I started doing fine art because I felt like I needed something that would last a little longer. Newspapers and magazines really don't get saved by normal people, and. Uh, I wanted people to enjoy my art for longer periods of time, so I, I really had this urge to do fine art that was more archival that could hang on the wall for many years. Right, right, right. And so your work is, may I say, very gentle. Oh, sh- you could say that. Um, it's very aesthetically pleasing, uh, beautiful, I Thanks. would say. Mm-hmm. Um, you use uh, very lovely colors Mm -hmm. i would say i don't want to say pastel colors but um it seems like you use a very um aesthetically pleasing palette i guess is the way (laughs) i'm trying to describe it you know i don't think there's any shame in making art that's good interior design Ah. i think about interior design quite a bit in fact even in my illustration career Mid-century modern furniture was a major influence on the t- what I would draw. When I had to draw a chair, I would draw an Eames chair. And then the same goes for color. When I do art, I don't want... I don't think anybody wants super garish colors in their homes, and I don't either. So I... I mean, you know, I'm influenced by nature, of course, when it comes to color. But then I also spend a lot of time just refining how the colors work with each other. And the computer helps because I can make minor adjustments in color on my screen before I go and print it. And once you've printed it, it's too late. Right, right, right. And you must have a really good printer. Or you have... I'm the printer. My hands. I mix my colors Ah. in a jar. And I put them on the paper with a squeegee. And so that in in that sense, it's more expensive because it's my time. So that's why I don't and want And materials, it. yeah. And materials, but right. it's, the time is... The materials in silk screen printing are pretty cheap. It's just paper and paint. So my time is valuable. I hate to waste it. So when you say that you use the computer to kind of play with the colors, explain... So you're both a digital artist and an yeah. analog artist in mm-hmm. a way. You're using print and color and paper, but then you're also using... Somehow it's mediated by the computer? It is. It's a, it's a total hybrid. So... My success as an illustrator was really because of the Macintosh computer and Adobe software. That's what got me into the business. When those two things were invented, there was nobody, well, there was not enough people doing it. So I was basically requested to, by designers, please become an illustrator. So I did that, and I was successful, and I got a lot of skill. And then I just naturally used that skill when I became a fine artist because it allows me to spend the time refining the shapes and the colors so that they will be pleasing at the end rather than using an experimental process in the studio, the physical studio. I experiment digitally, and it's a lot cleaner. I don't have to wash my hands as much. Right, 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 right. (laughs) But there's still, in the end, it's still paint that you've mixed on, Mm -hmm. like you just explained. What are, uh, when was it that you said to yourself... I want to start making fine art. Well, after the dot-com bust, Uh, I had a lot of free time. And I had money because I was very busy during the boom period. Unfortunately, I didn't immediately do the art. I thought about it for several years. And then in order to force myself to just get it done and just get started, I just signed up for a show, an art festival, I signed myself up for an art festival. To give yourself a deadline. Because then I had a deadline. Yeah. And I, I got really used to deadlines. In school, I had deadlines. And in, in, corporate in the commercial world, world yeah. I had very quick two-week deadlines with a newspaper. It's like a two-day deadline. They call you. If you, don't, if you don't pick up that call or email within an hour, you don't get the job. And then for the New York Times, you have to have it final art to them in 20, 48 hours. Wow. Uh, it's that competitive. Yeah. It's competitive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like They'll it. call somebody else if you don't Right, respond. if you don't pick up right away. So deadlines work for me, so I still do that. 
I still this is my public speaking deadline. I had to sign up with Matthew so that I would go and train myself to do public speaking. Every time I want to do new art, I sign up for some show. I can, I'm now in the position where I can talk to one of my spaces like artisans and say, I want to put on a say mother's day themed show. And they're like, okay, you have April or whatever the month mother's day is. Okay. Now I have to create 10 new pieces. I need to produce for that. Tell us, okay, so that's kind of your inspiration is the deadline as far as to get the work done. When you look around and you start thinking about what you want to do next, um, I'm assuming there's kind of a series that's involved with that. Is that like you work on a bunch of different pieces? or how, Tell us a little bit. That's the fun part because it is very intuitive. It's whatever is happening in my subconscious. And then you just have to sit around and stare into space a lot <laughs> and people... They don't know I'm working when I'm just staring into space. But the idea for the next show or the next theme series, I like to allow the environment and my f- feelings and my subconscious to suggest that to me. And uh, I've done a bicycle series. I've done a lot of animals. I did an invertebrate series where it was just you know, squid and jellyfish and things like that. I just felt that one was overdue. It hadn't been done very much. Jellies are now, they're pretty popular. Right. Yeah. Uh, tell us what is on your mind right now. <laughs> no, I know, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean it like that. I mean, what's the, the thematic bubbling up of what you are drawing and, and working on? <laughs> well, I just, as a result of the bicycle show that I did, Several years later, I got commissioned to do the jerseys for the Starbury Fields Forever Bicycle Ride, which benefits the cyclists for cultural exchange and the registration. That jersey design is being finished in about an hour. And then oh, that's the today. call you were taking on. I have friends that ride in the Strawberry Fields it's forever. It's the a, food's really good. It's it's a wonderful bike ride, <laughs> and it has a great story behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you did the jerseys for that. Um. The environment is a big influence, or I should say it's overpowering. It's I've been doing sea lions and other marine mammals for many years. In fact, a sea lion was my first image because they mean a lot to me. I spend a lot of my time volunteering to with the Marine Mammal Center to rescue sea lions and other seals in distress. I still haven't been able to create the image that I really feel like I need to, something dramatic to draw attention to some of the serious issues that are facing animals today. And I don't like art that's not pretty. So that's a conflict that I haven't really worked out yet. That's a big conflict. Yeah. What we're doing to our our Mm -hmm. oceans and um, how to represent that without being ugly is uh, quite quite a conflict and i hope you're able to i'm sure you'll be able to um yeah so i i think of it as a lifetime project and certainly there's a space somewhere for in your face difficult art and i can do that too but i like to reach more people right and the more you, eyes you get on it, the better. And you have a beautiful website. Again, it's DougRoss.com, where you sh- share quite a few of your of your works of art, as far as the images. I do. Um, I'm not is not trying to keep it a secret. I have a store, so you can go to the store and purchase art online. It's uh, just got it up, got it finished not too long ago, and it's turning out really well. Congratulations. Thanks. That's a big move for artists to yeah, be able to have a little storefront. Everybody on wants one, and then it takes a while to get it up. And, <laughs> yeah. and it has to be nice because it's extremely competitive online. Uh, the stores have to look really good or people won't really trust it. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So, yeah, the business of art, folks, it's pretty complicated. <laughs> And we're going to be talking, it's not easy, as Matthew just said, and we're going to be talking about that at the Non-Starving Artist Night 
at Event Santa Cruz. That's January 29th, starting at 615 at Cosmic. Cosmic is at, it's on Cooper Street and front 115? 115, yeah. 115 Cooper Street. And uh, you'll be able to uh, partake in another Event Santa Cruz. What do you got next month, Matthew? Next month is Beer Night. Mm. Oh, yeah. that's going to be hard to sell I, I, I know. out. No, free beer. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's not too hard. Yeah, we're trying to get samples from all the different breweries. I mean, I think we have a couple of breweries in town now. We have yeah. nine breweries. We, yeah. yeah. It's so wonderful. Quite a few, yeah. And then after that, I think we have young entrepreneurs. And then the next one after that is 1973. A lot of th- Things happen. 1973 here. NHS started. 1973. Staff of Life started. Eric's Deli. A lot of stuff. So I want to find out what happened that year. Why what it was happened? so different? Yeah. Why were all these companies opening and starting? And yeah. So I want to delve into that one. So I've got a lot of a lot of themes coming up. Nice. Yeah. And that's what we expect from Event Santa Thank Cruz. You. Thank you. Every month it's a different <laughs> theme. And Doug Ross, what a pleasure it's been to look at your work and. Uh, really discover you because we've never met before and no we haven't it was, um, it was fun yeah and this is the way through event santa cruz this is the way we we get to know each other and our community and m- come around these different thematic um spotlights that matthew is bringing to us uh event santa com. you can go there and see the past Event Santa Cruz um, videos and all kinds of stuff, as well as uh, a little bit of a um, explanation of what's happening for the Non-Starving Artists Night happening at the end of this month. It's a great lineup, and we'll still, um, like I said, there's a few tickets left. So if you want to go, just two were two were sold while we were talking. Oh, so we just yeah. sold two we tickets. just sold two tickets. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cha-ching. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Seven more to go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Matthew Thank Swinnerton you. and Doug Ross Thank you. and Thank Bennett you. Swinnerton over there in the corner. Thank you so much for being a <laughs> wonderful guest here at KZSC.